months. I hope you're doing well. So, the year is about over. There's a couple days left. And that means, if you haven't already, it's time to plan your goals for the next year. Now, um, I wanted to make a, a quicker video instead of my, one of my long rambly videos where I talk about goals and just give you some things I've learned over the last couple years from setting goals because for the last 10 or so years, I have um, set out on what I call challenge goals for myself and I've learned a little bit in the process and uh, I just kind of want to share those quick ideas, those quick thoughts with you. Um, so the first thing I learned uh, is to start at the end when you're when you're brainstorming your goals think about where you want to be at the end of the year you know in five years ten years what do you want your life to look like and how can you design your goals around that so that's the first thing I would say and then you can kind of build sub goals and work backwards so if one of your goals is to say buy a house within you know, five years, then it's like, okay, what do you need? You need a down payment. You need to get your credit score together. You know, you might need to increase your income to get a better house. These kind of things. So, you know, your goals could be about paying off your debt one year, you know, finding a side hustle to get more income could be another option. Learning how to invest your money into the stock market, those kind of things. So, the second tip I would say is to limit the number of goals because one year I had this idea that I was going to just make a bucket list and I, was, I had like a hundred goals. So I was like, no problem, let's do a week. Uh, and I lost the list pretty quickly and I don't know where I get it. was like a digital, you know, but I still couldn't find it. And it was just so much. It was just option paralysis. Like, I was like, oh, you just scroll through and you pick one at random and you could you go do it. And I just... I think I did like three of them. It was not a very productive year. And also with a hundred things on the list, like they weren't really relevant to my life. It was stuff like get a suit. It's just like, psst, I still haven't worn a suit, you know, in like 10 years. So that was a silly goal. Uh, anyway, um, so along that same idea of limiting goals, um, I found 10 is kind of the number that works for me, but you can do less, you know, there's no shame in that, um, you know, three, five, six, you know, if you do six, you got two months to like dedicate per goal, no big deal. I like 10 because that gives me like a month per goal with two extra months. Not that like most of these goals have to go all year long, but you can have like one month, you're like January, I'm gonna do this goal a bunch and really go on it, you know. That's just something you could do. Anyway, um, one thing that I've also kind of found is like if you have two goals in the same spirit, you can stick them together and, and turn them into what I call cluster goals. So if, for example, you want to like be more active, you could, and you have an Apple Watch, you could be like, okay, active calories burned, great. And you can also do steps, you know, and you just track those two things. And that's a cluster, that's one goal, that counts as one. Or, you know, if you're like me, you want to try to buy a house in the next three, five years, uh, increasing your net worth, which is both paying off my debts and increasing my savings. So, you know, that's two goals into one cluster goal. So that's one way to be able to pare it down and, and make it make sense to you. Um, the next thing, which I think is maybe the biggest key to setting goals, is you do not want to be results-based. You want to be effort-based. And what I mean by that is you can't, like, say you, you have a YouTube channel, you know, or a, a newsletter, and you say, I want 5,000 subscribers. You can't really control that. So, you know, I mean, you could buy the subscribers, but, like, what good does that do you? Like, that's just silly. Um, so a better goal would be like, I'm going to produce X amount of videos or, you know, I'm going to guest blog, guest, you know, on podcasts this many times because that's something you have a little more control over because you can just be cold calling blogs to, to get your guest post on. You could be cold calling podcasts to get on podcasts. You could be networking, you know, to get people's interest. You could be pitching your story to successful podcasts. And then every time you get on a podcast, you might 
get a couple new subscribers. So when you're planning your goals, think of things that you have ownership over. You want to be totally in control of the situation. Granted, things will happen. Like, you know, I had some surgery, some medical bills, so I got some medical debt. So that kind of shot some holes in my payoff debt goal this year. But what are you going to do? You know, is what it is. Um, but as much as you can, you know, focus on things you control, you know. Don't think like, I'm going to go score, you know, 100 points in my, my beer league games because you can't always control that. But what you can control is the practice. And if you do things right in practice, the score takes care of itself. So something you need to think about. Um, and so along with that, I like to, to focus on habits, um, which isn't really part of the goal setting process, but, but think about your goals as habits, which helps me arrive at my numbers. So for example, one of my goals this year is to practice the guitar for a hundred hours, you know, which when you, when you break it down, there's 52 weeks. Let's take two of those weeks off for vacation or whatever. Or just, I'm too busy to play the guitar. So that means I only really got to play for two hours a week, which isn't really that tough. You know, that's uh, a little more than 15 minutes a day. You know, if I'm playing 20 minutes most days, I'll have that goal. So when you think about it as a habit and you kind of break it down into chunks, that's how you can kind of arrive at the number, you know, that you need to be at. And so the last tip I want to leave you with is to make sure your goals fall into uh, what I like to call framework. Um, there's a popular one out there known as SMART Goals, which is an acronym for uh, Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Timely. So you want like a defined goal. Um, you want to be able to measure it quite easily. You want it to be achievable, something you can attain, relevant to your life, you know, um, and timely. So you should have a, a timeline which obviously we're setting year-long goals, so that should be pretty easy. Um, but a new framework that I've learned about recently um, is PACT goals, P-A-C-T, which is purposeful, actionable, continuous, and trackable. Um, and so for those, kind of how it's different is when we think pers purposeful, <laughs> um, you want to think long-term, what will benefit you in the long-term, you know? five, ten years out, um, and that, that kind of keeps you on track uh, when things get boring or, or, you know, you have to do kind of the side parts of the goal, which aren't as exciting, you know. Um, when we think actionable, again, that kind of goes back to what I was saying, like, you want to be able to control your efforts, not the outcomes. So think about that in terms of when you set up your goals, you know. Um, continuous, something you want to be able, to, you could be able to do like every day, ideally, I think. Um, you know, it's just something simple and repeatable. You don't run into option paralysis of like, oh, there's so much to do. But if your goal is to, you know, like you want to be a better, you want to have a better drive, you know, playing golf, um, then it's like, that's such a huge goal. But if you change it to, you know, I want to hit, I don't know, what's a, what's a reasonable number, 10,000 balls at the driving range, you know, when you're done with 10,000 shots, like your drives will probably be a lot stronger, you know, if you do it right. Uh, and trackable is something, you know, you want to think not so much measurable, but trackable. The, the difference here is... If you're doing 10,000 shots, that's, you know, um, how many hundred a week? That's like 200 a week, you know? So instead of saying, like, how many how many shots did I take? Instead, say, did I get my 200 this week? That's how you do trackable as opposed to measurable. So small tweak, but it, it, it makes a difference. So that's what I got for you. Um, those are my tips, you know, start at the end, uh, limit the number of goals, focus on habits, focus on things you have control over, you know, the input, not the outcome, uh, and make sure things kind of fall into a framework. 
And if you kind of follow those tips, um, I think you'll be pretty set. Um, and so to give you some examples, here are my uh, 2021 goals for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so goal number one is a cluster goal. I want to walk 4 million steps and burn 500,000 active calories according to my Apple Watch. I want to ride 1,000 miles on bikes. I want to read 50 books. I want to practice guitar for 100 hours. I want to increase my net worth by $15,000. I want to fast for 3,000 hours. Uh, and I, I made the caveat that it needs to be at least 12 hours for it to count. Um, and then I want to go on 75 adventures, which is taking my, my dog out places or riding my bike outside. I want to pick up 5,000 pieces of litter. I want to write 50 articles or short films and sketches. And I want to create 500 YouTube videos. So those are my goals for the year. Um, I think you can kind of see where my head is at. I want, I want to get healthier by being more active. Um, I want to do some good by picking up trash because seeing trash on the walks with my dog bugs me a lot. So I want to do something about it. I want to increase my knowledge by playing the guitar, learning a new skill, um, which is, you know, I've been playing the guitar for 15 years now and I'm still terrible. So I'm like, okay, let's do some focused practice like back when I was in a band, you know, um, get off the screens a little bit, you know, and then creating 500 YouTube videos and 50 articles. So I want to be creating, I want to be taking the things I learn and, and sharing them. And I want to get back into writing, which again, building a, a new skill, which is not really a new skill because I used to write a lot. So, you know, that, that's kind of where I'm at. That's what I want to do. Um, just be making stuff and learning and improving myself. So there you have it. Um, if you have any questions about goal setting, you want to talk goal setting, you want to drop some comments below. I am here for it. I will talk about goals and setting goals and helping people figure out what they should be setting their goals at all day. You know, I'm not like some life coach guru person. I'm not charging money. Like, I'm just real excited about goal setting. So let's talk about it. Um, I will help you out all day, every day. You know, if you don't want to um, talk on, if you don't want to drop comments, if you're embarrassed by that on Twitter, at Dingle Triggers, you can DM me there, I think. I don't know uh, how Twitter DMs work. I haven't closed them, I don't think. So, uh, yeah, hit me up. Let's chat because I love goals. So, uh, and if you have goals, drop them down below. Figure it out, uh, you know, share your goals. Maybe people can steal them and help themselves. So, that's all I got for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that if you haven't. Um, you know, otherwise, just I appreciate that of you for watching. So. As always, thank you for watching. Like I just said, I just I always throw my my endings. I can't I can't just riff the endings. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs>